So we've seen how we can store a single bit inside of a single flip-flop. So a flip-flop can store either a zero or a one. So if we get together multiple flip-flops, it means we can store multiple bits. So we call this collection of flip-flops a register. So for example, if we had a group of eight flip-flops, we could store eight bytes, eight bits, sorry, in the register. And we know eight bits is obviously a byte. So a collection of eight flip-flops could store a single byte. So that's what we've kind of got here. So imagine each one of these block is a flip-flop. So we've got eight flip-flops, so we can store eight separate bits. So here, this is um, storing a particular binary value. So we typically use registers for a temporary high-speed memory. So registers are actually expensive to build compared to other memory types, but they are much faster. So very, you can read data stored in the memory very quickly or write data into the register very quickly. But because they're expensive, they typically just used to store small amounts of data. So you often find registers inside of a central processing unit. So there's that's a small amount of memory inside of a central processing unit. So the arithmetic logic unit, which is also inside the central processing unit, or CPU, can access this data very quickly. And so it can carry out the operations quicker than it if it had to fetch data from the main memory. So imagine you've got RAM in the PC or whatever. You don't have to fetch data from memory. You can actually um, you know, fetch the data from inside the LEU. So the SRAM, so the static RAM inside of a microcontroller, is also typically implemented using flip-flops. So if you consider the difference in memory, so a microcontroller, you might only have 32 kilobytes of RAM. So it's obviously much smaller than the 16 gigabytes of RAM that you might find in a PC. So this is a typical architecture of a CPU or a computer. So you can see inside here, we've got different registers. We've got an instruction register, a memory address register, a memory buffer register, and then also a bank of eight registers here. So all of these are actually inside of the CPU. So this will be the CPU and then the memory is um, external. So when we're doing when we're doing operations, the LU can just fetch. It can do operate you know fetch data from these register banks, get the answer and write them back into the register. It's actually much quicker than if the LU was having to fetch memory, fetch the values directly from the RAM. So this is where the data movement operations coming from the LU. You might want to move data to memory, so you can just read in the register from uh, five, for example, using the data movement operator, move it to the memory buffer register, which you then will copy it into the main memory. So there's different ways of reading and writing data to a register. So if we do it serially, it means that we do it one bit at a time. Whereas we do it in parallel, it means doing multiple bits at the same time. So usually we do all of them at the same time. So the simplest type of register is a parallel in, parallel out register. So each flip-flop is a separate. So here we've got four flip-flops, we can store four bits. They're all separate, but they've all got the same clock signal. So they've all got um, the same clock signal. So we've got a different bit, so here we might want to store 1001 in this 4-bit register. So then you get the clock signal in, so in this case the positive edge, that's going to put those values, they'll get clocked into the flip-flop, into the flip-flops. And then we can just read these values out in parallel. So the values all come in in parallel, and then they all go out in parallel. So we've got a serial in, serial out register. So in this type of register, the bits are loaded in one at a time. So here we've got um, four bits connected in series. So the output just feeds into the input of the next one. So that, um, not, there's that to the, the clock as well. It's not drawn it for clarity. So there's a, the clock signal goes in as well. So suppose we want to put a, we put a one on the input 
So this is at, at time, so at time zero. When the first clock comes in, this one here gets clocked into the flip flop. So now that is in this first flip flop. So this this will be um, time t one. The next time step, that one shifts across, so you know it goes across here, and then the zero what we put on the input here will get loaded into the first register. So we know we might want to put a one on the on this input. Again, the next time step comes in t two, so that one goes to this one, that goes to this one, and the one is clocked in. Time step three, and then on the next time step, you know, the one what we put on the input will get clocked into the first one. So they move across in the different time steps. So you put a value in, and it, you can put a value in one at a time, and essentially just clock along this chain of flip flops. So it takes n clock cycles to load an n bit register.